once it's actually working, then we will grab this guy. Then we will activate that guy. Then we will start all over again because for the eighth time, we've had to redo the whole thing. Paste. All right. So hopefully this has actually worked, but we will see. Hopefully, this will actually work. I guarantee nothing, though. Because, as we've noticed, YouTube is horribly unreliable. So I'm just going to stand here. And I'm going to do the very best I can. Because this is a typical Monday, isn't it? Like, this is just how Monday works. This is how it all pieces together. This is how it fits in that in that way, you know? in that In that manner that just kind of, like... We were all in the other link. You had to be, Court Chick, because four links ago, it wasn't working. And now it's finally working. So we've finally gotten here. Um, yeah, it, it took it took way too long to actually get this working this morning. Which is funny, because I said the time, you know, dildo local. I gave the time, right? And of course, first I log on. You, YouTube may be April fooling me, which is so bad because listen, look at me. All right. Let, let, just, just, just look at me. Do I really look like I'm immature enough to really want to do anything April fooly? Hmm? Do I? Do I come off as the April fool type? I don't think so. So, yeah. So, um, hi. Good morning. How's it going? I am really warm in this thing. <laughs> like, I can only wear this outside in December, guys. This is just, I'm uh, like, uh, there's been no heat. There's no no humidity control in here right now. I was, came in and I was like, oh, it's going to be chilly. So I threw on the onesie. I was like, April Fool's Day. I'll wear the onesie. Oh my God. So warm. So warm. Anyway, okay, so Monday morning, coffee talk. This is kind of this this is fitting. Foolishness, shambling into it, kind of sort of working, kind of sort of not. We'll see exactly how how well this goes and whether or not I end up burning the studio down by by the end of this accidentally. <sighs> I didn't do it to I did the onesie to myself. I did not do the internet being the internet this morning to myself. But thank you for noticing. But that's okay, right? That is okay. Because we're here. We're we're doing the very best of it that we can, right? We are making we are making it work. And we're making it work with a couple of new friends. For example, we're making it work with Amanda Dearest and John Kay and Freya and Rachel Ham. Rage Ham. It's a Rage Ham. Rage Ham! From the people who brought you the passive aggressive turkey leg. It's Rage Ham. All right. Um, so yeah, you know, it's it's just the kind of thing where it just it doesn't really piece together the best. I just what can you do? And then I don't know what this whole flickering light situation is all about. Oh, is it coming off of the ring light? I think it's coming off the ring light. I think my ring light is slowly dying though. Because my ring light has has lived a good life. My ring light's original to to me starting starting internet content. So this ring light has lighted my junk so so nicely in the past. It's lived a good life. Anyway, so um, oh my god, I am so psyched. I am so psyched. no no stormy. I can get a ring light. That's not a problem. I, you, you asked me to put things on there for the tiny Valkyrie for her birthday. And I did that, you know? Um, but anyway, uh, man, I am so psyched. I am so psyched for the VIB exclusive giveaways at the end of the month. Today, we're announcing the, the VIB giveaway for the, um, for the books, right? Uh, I can't talk about what kind of books they are, but y'all know what kind of books I'm talking about. <laughs> because we had a giveaway of those from Ashley when we had Ashley on Werewolf Wednesday. We've got two giveaways coming up 
this month, which are going to be sick. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, it, man, I, I want to, I want to give it away, but I don't. So anyway, um, so that's going to be a grand old time. We got some some nice work coming out this week. We got some playful stuff coming up. Um, I've got I've got I've got to start. I'm 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 preparing for the May the Fourth, uh, the May the Fourth mod mission. The the May the Fourth visit the mods are taking to um, the pup and the prowler via a D and D game. Um, and in order to make sure that my chops are finally honed, I'm going to be doing some a local charity game. And that local charity game, in exchange, is going to be giving me something for the monthly giveaway. I got to stop saying stuff. I want to give it away, but I'm not. Okay. Anyway. So, um, you don't have to name the book. No, 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 Allison. We don't need to name the books on the websites. This is a VIB exclusive. The VIBs know about this. That's it. VIBs get the get the get the monthly drawings, the nice one and the naughty one. So we're gonna oh, this month's naughty one is gonna be interesting too. Anyway, so um, we were supposed to see some dude opening things. Yeah, I have to piece that video together, court check. Um, I have to also get approval from a certain um, a certain uh, coffee company so that I can include. Uh, uh, because I got asked about a mug that I showed this morning. So I need to get approval from that coffee company in order to put um, their website on the TikTok that I make about the coffee mug that I was using this morning. So anyway, so anyway, so here we are. Here we are. I made it back in time though. I was here on time. I was here on time, which is impressive given the fact that I was standing out on a pier with not but a old haunted lighthouse for company as I was trying to get Grandmama Forge Bear a, a rental car today. So, you know, it's all, <sighs> there was a lot. There was a lot this morning, but I'm here. I'm now. I'm present. This is live. At least you think it is. I might be, I might be artificially intelligent right now. There's a joke in there, but I'm just going to leave it be. Okay. Um, yeah, Grandma Forge Bear is fine. Um, she discovered that somebody slammed into her car and like three other cars in the parking lot of a supermarket. And so all three of those cars were totaled, including Grandma Forge Bear's. She was in the store at the time. So she's fine. She just needs a rental until she gets it replaced. So yeah, no, I have not. I've been, Allison, I have not had a lot of caffeine. I have, I have, however, stood in like 12 degree ocean air. So like there is, there is salt water and sea manliness currently rushing through my veins as we, as we speak. Sassy, sassy, salty semen is running through. Wait, hold on. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> caffeine would help me regulate right now. We are so far beyond that. Uh, she doesn't, she doesn't like driving my vehicles. She doesn't like driving my vehicles. She doesn't, she will not take my vehicles, but any of them, not all right. In that one's it, yes, in this one's it. Anyway, moving on. Hey, this is Monday Morning Coffee Talk. We ain't doing that here. We are not doing that here. Okay, so we said hello to our new friends, and I've caught you up, and I've teased appropriately, I think. Right? I've teased enough already. Oh, my goodness. Ping, yes. I heard that you got home. Thank you very much. I track your every movement just in case I have to inform any small villages that you're you're coming in from the shoreline like Godzilla. Moving on. Ha. A fool's day in April is what MMCT is labeled for me today. Oh boy. Oh boy. Here we've been going. I'm warming it up. All right. 
All right, buckle up, Buttercups. It's a new week, a new month, the new April Fool's edition of MMCT. Get those questions in queue. Ensure that they're SFW, 3Cs compliant, in alignment with the rules and guidelines. Brother Bear, fill your mug of choice. I do not have a mug on me right now. I do have a bottle of something that I can't drink this early in the morning. But anyway, and give us your best. I'll even lend you the brain cell this week. Aww. Smashy sis lend Nick brain cell. Ah, 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 ah. All right. Nikki says, it's April Fool's Day. To celebrate, I decided to come up with three fun questions. Have a great day and try not to be too crazy. Number one, what is the what animal is the biggest party animal? I feel like, okay. Hear me out. I feel like it's going to be something we do not suspect. All right? People would be like, oh, rabbits, they're crazy. Oh, you know, like deer, they can get gnarly. Man, that one time I saw a panda doing a keg stand out of control. But... I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking maybe the tortoise. I think the tortoise parties harder than anything else. Maybe. Either that or like something like the slo- a tree sloth, you know? Like nobody expects the tree. What if the tree sloth only moves that fast when we're looking at it, right? What if, what if? Most of the evil things that snatch people in the Appalachian Mountains are just three-toed sloths, and we all just can't see it, perceive them because they move so fast when we're not watching them. What if sloths are the weeping angels of the animal kingdom? I just, I'm putting it, but they also know how to f- throw a frickin' rager. You know, what if three-toed sloths are thrown frickin' ragers every single time we're not paying attention to them? You know, and we just look and we're, they're just like. And we're like, oh, this is, you know, by the way, for everybody listening to the audio just then, I took off my pants. That's what I was, you couldn't hear it. You couldn't see it, but there was a removal. There was removal. There was removal of the, of the, uh, of the stitch onesie. For anybody who's only allowed to listen to the audio, just a heads up. You're going to say the manatee? Do you know you can't touch manatees? You can't show them affection? It's a law. Do you know why? Because if you show manatees affection, every single time they see humans, they'll approach them expecting affection. How sad is that? Like. They're so adorable. They're giant sea potatoes, and they just want to hug. But we can't give them hugs, because if we do, they're all going to want hugs. (sighs) Hear me out. I think we have to take the worst humans in the world. You know, not the ones who have actually been convicted of horrible crimes. I'm talking about, like, people we just can't stand. And we need to make their punishments for being buttholes hugging manatees that's your job now your job is just to hug manatees kind of feel some kind of human human emotions but yeah three-toed sloths their secret they're they're all i'm climbing up this stick now i'll get there in 45 minutes and then the second the second we're not looking they're shotgunning beers like nobody's business. I dare you. The next time you're out in the wild and you see a three-toed sloth, turn around and then turn back real quick. They will have a party hat on. All right. They will be totally rocking a blunt and there will just be Miller light cans all over the jungle floor. Like, where did all these cans come from? In the 3.5 seconds, I turned my back. The answer is tree sloths. Second question. What is the one thing you wish could exist but doesn't at the moment? Portals! Nikki! Portals! 
always portals. Every freaking day, I want portals. I just want portals. And I know, I know what you're thinking. The obvious answer, booty calls. Okay? Because all you'd have to do is, like, pour, open a portal at at your 3 a.m. Hey, 18 wise friend's house. Right? Open a, ver a portal. And you, and you just stick it through. Anyway, but no! I want portals so we don't have to drive places. I don't want to drive. And there are people on the road currently, not naming any names here. There are people on the road right now who shouldn't be driving that I don't trust. Anyway, so yeah, just portals. I don't want teleportation. Teleportation is a little bit, it's a little too wiggle fingery for me. You know what I mean? It just always makes, it makes the hairs on the back of my neck go, I'm going to come out of this teleport one day and my butt is going to be on the front. You know what I mean? It's very space balls. I'm worried it's going to happen. You know? <sighs> oh, we teleported you without skin. You know what I mean? Like, no, I meant yeah. portals. Right here, right now, Nikki. If I could hold the patent for them, that would be pretty sick. You know, it's just like, if I had one wish... I would wish to instantly know how to build portal tech, safe portal technology so that we could eliminate cars because holy French toast. I can't, can't with traffic. Oh my God. Don't even get me parent pick parent drop off. Oh my God. Let me tell you something. All right. It was very elevant. It was very elephant. It was very elephant. It was very evident today. That uh, there were some parents who celebrated a little too hard yesterday. All right. Because there was somebody doing so many K turns that I thought, and I was just like, you're, you're not, that's that the 147 point turn in order to get out of the parking lot. There is a line of traffic in, there is a line of traffic out. Okay. There are school buses have their own space. You can't screw this up. This neon green Kia Soul just decided that it was just going to pull hard across two lanes of traffic. And there's a curb in front of me. There's a curb to the right of me. And they just went whomp. Right in front of me. So I'm staring at the passenger door. And the kid in the car is looking at me like, I'm so embarrassed. Just kill me now. And I'm like, I can't help you, child, because your parents are too busy doing this. For anybody listening to the audio, this is, I am doing a sawing motion. It was, it was bananas. Nobody allowed for cars. Portals. Screw your teleportation, Catherine. That was really mean. I'm sorry. No. But teleportation, no. No. No, no. If, if, if anything else, okay, a safe way of shooting people across, like, so that you do not ever stop being physical. I want teleportation portals. Okay. I want portals. I want portals. And if I own the, own the patent, then I'll, I promise to make them affordable. But if, you know, but yeah, I'd be afraid of somebody else owning the 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 patent because if somebody else owns the patent, they're going to be like, they're fifteen thousand dollars a piece. Screw you, people. All right, what's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Hey, um, so <laughs> I can't tell you. I'm going to tell you, but I can't. And here's why. Oh, God. Yeah, no, they'd be cheaper than a television. They'd be cheaper than a television. I'd call, I would charge a dollar more than it costs to manufacture. You know what I mean? Like, eh. anyway. Um, weirdest thing that I've ever eaten. I can't tell you um, exactly what it was because I don't know. Here's why. So, a couple of friends of mine. And I went up for spring break to Boston. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking to yourself, Nick, spring break Boston. Yeah, obvious choice. We went up. We were like, oh, no, we're going to we're gonna drink. We're going to hang out. 
We're going to go to a couple of the sites. We're going to, you know, there's a, there's a lot of pubs. There's a lot of nightlife. It'll be a grand old time. I was like, we could totally crash on my, my uncles. It'll be good. Right. Had a, had a place to go. And, uh, <laughs> we did that and we're out and we're having a grand old time. And I was about three o'clock in the morning and, uh, me, uh, and my two friends, we end up in a restaurant above a mahjong parlor, um, about six blocks away from Boston Commons, and we're eating, and we're tired, and we're drinking a lot of water to recover, and none of the none of the menu was in English, not a single word. Nope. And nobody spoke a word. And we just sat there and we smiled. We drank our water. And every so often they would roll by a cart with stuff on it. And we would politely point. And one of my friends knew three words. Please, thank you, and more, please. Or more. So we did the best we could. And that would be the weirdest thing that I've ever eaten. I can't tell you what I ate. Um, it was all really tasty. Um, but yeah, to this day, I still don't know. It was, it was, it was, it was interesting. It was interesting, but it was, it was a good time. It was one of those life experiences, you know, it was just one of those experiences. It was okay. Everything was great. We had some really great noodles and there was some other stuff and it was very tasty. You know, you don't, it, it's the Anthony Bourdain of the thing. You know what I mean? You gotta just, you gotta, you find yourself in that situation. You have to go, I'm exploring. I'm endeavoring to understand other peoples and cultures. And I was just like down for it. And the drinks were fantastic. And the wait staff was very polite. Moving on. KR says, I have two in-depth questions for what your audio mixing style is like. What software do you do you use to mix, design, and edit your audios? Since you use audio as a main medium to tell your stories, did you ever take small at-home courses from somewhere like Udemy, Udemy.com or similar in sound design to further enhance the listening experience of your audios? K. Okay. I use Adobe in order to do all of my videos. And then I utilize, I actually utilize GarageBand mostly when it comes to some of my audio stuff. There's a couple of other suites that I do incorporate when it comes to audio usage. Um, it just comes down to what I'm working on and exactly how, um, how elaborate I want to, um, how elaborate I want to make the audio. You know what I mean? Like some of the stuff like, um, what was it? Golden lots for the nine bears, right? Like I, I've used, I've used Adobe for both. You know, I also have used epidemic sometimes. Like it really, it really comes down to, I like to fiddle with all of it because it's really the kind of thing where I'm playing with it as I go along and I'm kind of learning as I go. Podcastle's okay. Um, like High Wave was all right. It had its its plus its minuses. Twisted Wave was all right. It's like GarageBand. GarageBand has done a lot of good for me, especially as I've gone along. So I've been able to learn more about the system as I go, which is kind of good. And and you know you need. I've got the Road N2 NT2. I've got the Rode NT2. I've got the Zoom H3 VR sounder. I've got the uh, 3DIO by Oral. It's all hooked into a Mott U XM2, which is a seven a seven multi feed board. Um, I've 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 had a lot of good times with it. I am constantly in the process of like upgrading. You know what I mean? Like as of the the XM2 was was a recent edition. Um, the, the whole thing's being run through a Mac mini for right now. I mean, eventually I'll end up doing a Mac studio. Um, but 
that's I mean that's further down the road if I end up if I end up continuing to create audio, you know, in depth. Um, but yeah, I have the ability right now. I mean, as of right now, I have the ability to simultaneously record six channel sound, um, utilizing every mic in here. But it's it's all a matter of just kind of like piecing the whole thing together. You know what I mean? It's really about what I want to feel. More often than not, more often than not, I mean, Andy, I don't know where I don't know where the winds are winds are taking me. I'm gonna I keep telling you, I'm gonna be telling my stories on Patreon until the wheels come off. You know what I mean? Uh, that is that is guaranteed. I might you know, if I ever get an audiobook contract, there's always, you know, that possibility. But I don't know if that's ever going to become a thing. I mean, I'm a writer more than I am anything else. We talked about this last week. So me continuing to record audio will be simply for the patrons, will be simply for Quinn. I will expand my my equipment. You know, we'll, uh, actually, I have a piece for Twitter today, which I think is dummy. Um, I think it's a matter of... I think it's a matter of picking up, I think it's a matter of picking up, you know, the equipment that suits my needs. I'm not going to be out there spending, you know, 80 grand for the equipment. You know what I mean? Like, I want to make sure you're getting the best sound quality, right? I want to make sure I'm able to do stuff. Like I said, um, there's a, you, Andy, at this point, you should be used to the evil smiles. But, um, Oh yeah, Joe. I had I had that smile when I mentioned Twitter. There was another project that got talked about in the last couple of days that made me have that exact same smirk. But we will leave that alone. Um, so it, it's it's all a matter of it's all a matter of balancing. You know how much more quality am I going to get out of the audio versus you know I can keep the cost. I can keep it. I can get that equipment without like making it. Oh, I got to drive up Patreon prices. Like, no, I'm not. It's, it's that, that fine balance of giving you everything you deserve out of me without having to make it expensive. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, it's, it's, but yeah, so I've played with a lot of the free audio, the free softwares, Adobe, Adobe and GarageBand are really where I've settled in because I've just fiddled with them so very much that it just seems like it's, it's a grand time had by all, you know what I mean? And, and nobody else needs anything else beyond that. Like Quinn, <laughs> Quinn to this day is like, Oh no, man, your audios are solid. You're sending us like three channel audios. Most, most of our contributors are sending us like one channel. Like, yeah, oh, I'm a, you know, I do what I can. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but right now I do have the ability to record six channels at once, which could, can get very overwhelming. You, uh, an audio ensemble that specifically is built for like a surround sound studio. And honestly, I don't know if anybody is playing me through 6.1. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's lovely. It's lovely. And I enjoy it. And I'm going to keep doing it. Like I said, I'm going to keep driving it like I stole it until, you know, somebody stops me. So yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are my answers to that. Right. Um, I didn't take any courses. It's all DIY. I've all learned from tutorials. I've learned from watching others. I've learned from, I've learned from, um, I've learned from friends, you know, I've, I've borrowed information further up in the chat. What are we talking about? Okay. Anyway, I got to stop eyeballing it out of the corner. Sage you AJ. Sage you AJ says, Oh my gosh, to layer the close your eyes audio. <laughs> See Andy. So we know that me on multi-channel can be dangerous. <sighs> Streaming me and Dolby Atmos. Well, that would be a good, I would, I would have so much. Listen, if somebody were to say to me, I'm going to put you in Dolby Atmos, I would record an audio messing with that system in and of itself. Oh my God. That would be amazing. Um, Sage Wager says, what's a chicka cherry? 
Anytime I need to see your face, I close my eyes and I am taken to a place where a crystal mind and magenta feelings take a shelter in the base of my spine. Sweet like a chicka cherry cola, just in case your savage garden knowledge isn't up to snuff. Back in my day, Sage. Back in my day, I remember the chicka cherry cola. Savage Garden was on the radio. We were still communicating through the, the Morse codes there. We were sending dirty messages that way. Do you know how much it costs to send to send to send a picture of Richard through the Morse code? I'll tell you. 45 cents? 16 days worth of labor out there, out there in the candy, the cotton candy mines. It was tough. Spent all my time dividing my hours between the cotton candy mines and and the dildo the dildo processing plants. Trying to make sure everybody was darn tootin' and skippy. <laughs> Back in my day, we didn't have cans or bottles of soda, you whip, you, you foolish little things. No. They just poured the soda directly into our hands. We let it roll down our faces, whatever we collected. That was what was worth the nickel. <laughs> Back in my day, we didn't have your fancy Nerf shooters. No, no. They used to give us the one foam dart. You had to throw it at your friends. That was it. That was the whole entire game. You you played outside until you either were tired or somebody dislocated their shoulder. Again. That's it? What's it? Uh-oh. Camille's like, I'm done with this, man. He has done me in. Back in my day, rubber tip. Of course they were rubber tip. That's what makes them slide in so easy. Moving on. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Lawn dart, you say? <laughs> you kids had it easy with your small lawn darts. The version we had were full javelins. You stood 20 feet away from one another. You painted the bullseye on the floor there. And then you had to stand in the middle of the bullseye. Guess what? You won if you got the most points or you killed the other team. That's how that used to go. Goodness gracious. Y'all kids with your fun call pops nowadays. No, we need to used to have to do whittle them. Whittle them out of wood. Just, you know how goofy a fun call pop looks whittled out of wood. Yeah, they used to be called fur call pops because we used to make them out of fur. Fur trees. Softer wood got less splinters. And Lord knows back in those days, if you got a splinter... We just started digging the, we used to dig the trench for you just then. Oh, well, you're saying to yourself, you're saying, oh, why not a regular grave? We used to dig the trench because that way we could slide your dead body down into the valley and feed the ungodly beast that lived down there. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Sage says, why do you have a lovely bunch of coconuts? Stop sharing at my coconuts. Sagey, listen, there's a tear for that. All right, my eyes are up here. Stop making eyes at the coconuts. Deedly dee dee. Number three, would the witch doctor's advice to you be ooh ee ooh ah ah? No, it would not. You know what they would say. The witch doctor would say, listen, Nick. It's been a little while since I've seen you, but um, every single time I do, I can't help but think to myself that uh, your mom, she's still single, right? I mean, I'm immortal. She's been damned to walk the earth for thousands of years. We should get together. Don't you need, don't you need a good stepdad? <sighs> this is why I don't come to you for medical advice anymore. That's usually how that goes. 
Why am I yelling? Who's to say? All right. <laughs> Only Flans will will was like yet again another reason why you should have an OnlyFans by this point, good sport. Oh my goodness, Joe! I'm not doing that accent anymore. I've done. <laughs> Joe Joe Blackthorne says, in a TikTok comment last week, Stormy suggested we include Appa and Sagira in our D and D party which got me thinking about adjusting our inventory and performers having ridiculous riders. What would we need or want, what would they demand we have prior to joining us on the campaign? All right, so here's the thing. Joe, there's a possibility due to the conversation that took place, and I have had a lot of time to, uh, to, uh, hewn out more fine details of of the pup and the prowler. Sakira and Appa may in fact be included, but if you wanted them to play at the table with you, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a couple pounds of bacon cooked, okay? And you're going to need a dog bowl full of water. And here's why. But that dog bowl can't be full of water to begin with. Here's why. So you're going to have the dog. You're going to, oh, and we're also going to need one of those um, cardboard scratching things, like the scratch pads, just like chock full of catnip. We'll, we'll get there. All right. So you're going to need the bacon for the good boys, like, because he's the goodest boy. And the water dish is going to be for him, but only after Sagira drinks out of it. Because every single morning, Sagira goes... Okay. Appa has an elevated food and water bowl situation. Every morning, I come down the hall to pour my first cup of coffee. Sagira's fluffy little ass is sitting in the empty food dish with the front paws on the divider betwixt the two. Again, elevated wooden structure, two bowls. The water dish is empty. Now, if I fill her water fountain, does she drink out of it? No! But if I pour water out of the Brita filter for her, she will drink it out of, out of Appa's bowl before Appa gets to it. And proceeds throughout the course of the day to return to Appa's water bowl, drink out of it, and then go about her day. I bought her a water fountain, something that aerates, something that bubbles. No, nope, no interest, none whatsoever. Drinks out of the dog's bowl every single time. And then she loves to scratch herself the scratch herself the the cardboard uh, uh, catnip pad, and then fall asleep on it in the sun. That's her favorite nap spot. Um, she will, however, during the nights, proceed to sleep wherever the hell she can find a surface of me that she can lay on and then potentially grab into. Yeah, great time. Great times had by all. Stormy says, number one, what kind of secret society would you like to start? Isn't this kind of the secret society now? <laughs> Like, secret society. Secret society. I mean, like, you'd have to, we'd have to go in the completely wrong direction. It'd have to be a secret society that goes in the completely wrong direction. <sighs> like, let's see here. What kind of secret society? Like, we'll hollow out the volcano. You know, we'll hollow out the volcano and we'll do the thing, you know, we'll put in the giant table and the big spinning chairs and it'll be all seem like it's going to be evilly and whatnot. But really all we're going to do is find ways of, you know, doing things that slightly pester evil people. You know what I mean? Like, 
every Nazi's shoes fill of, filled with mayonnaise. You know what I mean? Like something, something that just makes you re recognize that the universe hates you. You know what I mean? Like, like, you know, finding ways of screwing up people's days in such subtle ways that they're just kind of like, oh, maybe, maybe I need to change my life decisions. You know what I mean? Because, you know, you could always just death ray everybody you didn't like from space. But I feel like that's passe. Like, that's, that's easy, you know? And I'm more of the Matt Murdock, no kill rule kind of school. So, yeah. Annoying. Oh, every member of Congress got hit in the head with spam. In the can? Oh, no, just spam. What's weird is they got hit in the head with spam. Nobody was around. Meanwhile, the secret society, the secret society of of the 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 invisible force field bears. I don't know. I'll think about it. Um I'll 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 workshop it. We have developed a a ultra long range spam launcher. You know what I mean? Accurate within 30 two to three inches. You know shoot spam, you know, shoot spam over three miles away. It adapts to the curvature of the earth. Oh man, every member of Congress. How did that happen? Why was why was the House of Representatives filled with Hawaiian punch? You know? This is like I can't imagine why that happened. You know what I mean? Like with a lovely little note. No. Get your shit together. Love question mark. You know, like spam rail gun. Real gun spam. There it is. It's a fantastic plan. What movie would be greatly improved if it was made into a musical? Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, uh, Gone Girl. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I just, I don't know. What would be a good music? What would be a good movie to do into a musical? What deserves it? What needs it? The Room. The Room would be a good one to do. <laughs> I was about to say, okay, here's what I want. Oh my God. No story. No, I got it. I got it. I want a musical that is a musical documentary of the making of Cats the Musical, the movie. <laughs> oh, yes, that's it. That is so meta and bound to be so ungodly off the rails. It's kind of like... That's already been done. Wait, hold on. Who? I don't know what's what's going on. Okay, moving on. It's just like because it's like it's it's like it's like it's like um it's like Heart of Darkness, right? The 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 documentary about ma the making of Apocalypse Now. You know what I mean? You know, inevitably, it's going to turn into like a shit show where a bunch of people are chain smoking and have that thousand yard stare. Like by the end of it. Like, but I want it to be a musical about the worst made musical that that may that some people argue killed the movie musical, which is a weird thing to say because I still love to death the Wonka movie that just came out with 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 the boy, you know, the Shalamut, the Shalamus, the the Shalamalamar. Um that movie, by the way, if you haven't seen okay. Movies and television shows that I will recommend this upon this day. The Wonka movie, worth at least one view because it's made by the same people who made Paddington and generally is like charming to a fault. Two, the movie Damsel was great. Um, the movie on Amazon Prime Bottoms is what happens if you take The Breakfast Club and Heather's 
and you give both of them um, way you give them magic mushrooms. Um, I have been watching Renegade Nell on Disney Plus. Really good show. Just fun. Just fun. Like if you were into like Buffy the Vampire Slayer back in the day, Renegade Nell is is totally your jam. Um, but yeah, total totally fantastic. So yes, my musical choice is. Hairball, hairball, colon, the musical documentary of the making of Cats, the musical, the movie. There it is. <laughs> there it is. That's it. Um, I despise you right now. <laughs> uh, silence of the silence of the musical, and yes, I've seen it. Wait, wait, was Silence of the Lambs a musical? Hold on. Am, is that what I'm getting? Wait, hold on. Hold on. Silence of the Lambs was already a musical? Okay, now I gotta I gotta pivot. Um well that was a joke that didn't wait, no. Oh my god, just make Oppenheimer into a musical. There it is. Oh my god. Oh. Um 2005. Jesus. Who I did not how did that fly under my radar? That's tricky. Oh, and I knew about Lestat. Woof. Love never dies. Woof. And turn off the dark. Woof. Like I how did I not know that there was a sun? I know Heathers is a musical, right? Why are we talking about Listen, I said Heathers and Breakfast Club had a baby and and that baby had a lot of had a had a trip and wrote the script for bottoms on Amazon Prime. But anyway, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No, Texas Chainsaw Massacre needs to be a ballet. Yeah. So what I said. What secret conspiracy would you like to start? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Will, uh, the musical, the Mean Girls musical that got released on Amazon Prime is the musical version of the movie based on the musical that they made of the movie. Yes, I think I said that correctly. Moving on. What secret conspiracy would I like to start? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh my god <laughs> I the one that popped into my the first thing that popped into my head is not good stormy it's not um <laughs> oh, you might have to re this question on Thursday um the safe for work version of this is um a safer work version of this is that uh Bob Bob Ross and uh if if the planet Earth ever is uh, in danger the reason why we haven't been there we go let us put it this way my conspiracy that I would like to start right here and right now is that the real reason we have not been invaded by aliens is because if aliens showed up and started to threaten our way of life, Jesus, Gandhi, Bob Ross, and Mr. Rogers would all magically appear out of nowhere. They would form a giant mecha savior that would shield the earth from alien evilness and old-timey box it. That is my that is my conspiracy. That's what I'm going with. We did not go with Bob Ross the musical. No, we did not. <laughs> coffee cat says, "Happy time zone bear." Hope your coffee is strong and the day is smooth. I've got a couple of super important questions for you. What is your favorite cover of a song? Oh my god, I got a playlist of covers. I have a playlist of covers. I do. It's, 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 
it's i think it's is it is it a, a playlist of covers i feel like it is i don't remember if it is my favorite cover what is my favorite cover uh, I mean, I'm going to be 500 miles by mix picks is a good one. Um, what's up the f- cover of the four non blonde song by Jill is lucky is a good one. The cover of the scientist by Umar is a good one. Sugar. What's going down covered by goat is a good one. Sweet Child of Mine taken covered by Taken by Trees is a good one. Uh, let's see here. Blister in the Sun covered by Guster is a good one. Come on, Eileen covered by Save Ferris. Now I know the origins of that song, but I would like to think that Come On Eileen was taken back by Save Ferris. Just putting that out there. Um the cover of The Cave by Tyler Ward and Megan Nicole is a good one. Hallelujah, covered by Rufus Wainwright. Put some sugar on me, covered by Picking on series. Picking on series. It's a bluegrass cover. Fantastic. Um, let's see here. I mean, Johnny Cash's cover of Hurt. Like, eh, how do you go wrong? Dancing with myself, covered by Blink One Eighty Two. I will survive, covered by Cake. Now I know. I know. Nothing hits harder than the original I Will Survive. I get that. I'm just saying that the cover by Cake is fun. Okay? Money by the Flying Lizards. The cover, the cover. I'm just, you know, I'm just, listen. With a little help from my friends by Joe Cocker. Sell out the Ska Acoustic cover by Real Big Fish. You know? Gin and Juice covered by, by... The Gourds, Come Together, covered by Michael Jackson. Such Great Heights, covered by Iron and Wine. Just saying, just saying, just saying, just saying. I could do this forever. Chris Cornell covering Billie Jean. Crazy by the Violent Femmes. You know, and it, like Eye of the Tiger, covered by the Rural Alberta, Alberta Advantage. Fortunate Son, covered by Donovan Franken, Frankenrider. Heartbeats, covered by Jose Gonzalez. I Kissed a Girl, covered by William Fitzsimmons. You know, I I could do this forever. Three is a Magic Number by Blind Melon. I could do this forever. I'm not going to do this forever, though. This could go on forever. This could go on forever. You know, I just, I'm putting that out there. I'm just putting that out there. Smooth Criminal, Animal, Am- A- Alien, and Farm. Boys of Summer by the Ataris. American Woman by Lenny Kravitz. Wayfaring Stranger covered by Jack White. You know, it was somewhere over the rainbow. What a wonderful world. Right? Just just putting that under there. Just putting that out there. Just putting that out there. Just putting that out there. Lithium covered by the polyphonic spree. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I promise. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. And if you could see one band get back together for one night, who would it be? I mean, like, do I get to bring anybody back from the dead? Because, like, the Beatles would be sick. Um, I mean, like, Prince and the Time playing together would be sick. Um, you know who I really want to see get back together? Rage. Rage Against the Machine. I would really like to also see System of a Down get back together. But, you know, what can you do? What can you do? What can you do? You know what I mean? It's like, eh, it gets difficult. Oh, uh, don't worry, goddess. I will copy it all and throw the throw the list. I'll pitch the list to you guys. No worries. It's a, it's a full playlist. It's not a problem. 
Um, I can copy and paste her. Uh, it's it's part of a of a playlist known called um, "Back from Whence You Came," which was put together as a as a travel mix for somebody. So yeah, ba uh, ba, Miss Jen, the Sunshine Squirrel, says good morning, Mister. Good Monday morning, Mister Brother Bear. With it being April Fool's Day and all the silliness that it brings, my question is: What is one of the best pranks you have ever pulled? One of the best pranks that I have ever pulled. Do you guys remember me telling you about my uh, one of my roommates who oftentimes, in the process of getting annoyed at me, would throw condoms at me? Do you remember? Does this ring a bell to anybody? Remember? Um, so, <laughs> did anybody know that you can inflate and tie condoms like you do balloons? So, <laughs> um, Duh. Thank you. Very kind of you. So. <laughs> April Fools for me has always kind of been the opportunity to be playful, but also, you know, remind people um, <laughs> with whom they are fucking. Um. <laughs> And being the son of a individual who gets their hands on helium or air compressor tanks um, so that you can mix your ratios so that you have different heights of loft. So to say that his room was full from the floor to the ceiling with inflated condoms. Now, did it take me a couple of hours? Yes. Is that what movie marathons are for? Yes. I had a Blu-ray player. I, I actually it was DVD player. Back in my day, it was a DVD player. I had the day off. I sat myself on the couch after having lugged a air compressor and a helium canister into into our apartment and i sat up on the couch and i watched movies and i filled condoms and i slowly migrated them over because i knew i knew he would not be home i knew he would not be home how did i know that he wasn't going to be home was it like you planned it did you perhaps give their boyfriend a gift card so that they could go out and have dinner because it was nobody, nobody else, nobody else had time. Nobody else, what? No, no, we should go out to dinner, honey. You should. The two of you haven't been out to dinner forever. I'm just gonna hang back. Here, here, here's a gift card. Best $50 I ever spent. They went out and they got wings and they had beverages and they were perfectly happy. And they came back and I was like, you know what? You know what? I. I will go stay at somebody else's tonight if you guys want the place to yourself. It's perfect. Just go ahead. Go do the... Go be... Go be kids. Enjoy yourselves. Don't worry about little old me. I'll find somewhere to go. There were inflated condoms on the ceiling of his room for a good week. Yeah, and every so often, as they would deflate, they would just start drifting down. It's like all of a sudden, a, a ghost dick started emerging, reminding you, reminding you of how screwed up Nick is. <laughs> it's a good one. It was a good one. Um, anything else? 
I did cover the outside of somebody's uh, Honda Civic with playing cards one time. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Anything else? What? <laughs> um, was, there, was there anything else good that pops into my mind? I mean, we used to always get super scolded um, during, like, when April Fools happened when we were at school. Like, best not. Blah, 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 blah. So yeah, but I would have to say that we're. Uh, Okay. Card covered cards covering the Civic. Cards covering the Civic. I did. <laughs> okay. You guys are going to hate me. Um, so there used to be a place, there used to be a place, basically like a newsstand, you know, on the newsstand always had the top three shelves of the magazine rack. You know what I'm saying? The top three shelves of the magazine rack were stacked with magazines that were behind cardboard, which all stated yellingly that you weren't allowed to purchase them unless you were 18 or over. Friend of mine was moving um, some stuff, <laughs> some stuff. <laughs> and um, I may have, okay, how can I say this? How can I, this, yes, okay, so a glut of magazines were purchased, placed into a box, and put into the hallway leading from the living, the kitchen down the hall towards the bedrooms. It was indicated that it was his stuff. It was left in the hallway intentionally so that in the process of moving back into his his mother's house, she might trip over it and in so doing, open it up and discover that it was just a box of discount uh, adult magazines. Because I had talked to the owner of the magazine place and asked them what they did with all of the out-of-date issues. And they apparently kept them, like, they had to throw them out. So it's like, okay, no, dude, bet, give them to me. And I stuffed them into a box. And I dropped them with the rest of the stuff that we were moving into his, his mom's house. Yeah, that would, those would be my top three. Inflated inflated condoms, cards covering a car, nudie mags in a box. And I remember hearing about that. Mom, those aren't mine! Yeah, I remember that. Moving on. Andy Panda says, hi, Nick. Happy Monday. I hope you survive the holiday weekend with minimal damage. Ho -ho! Any good story is from the recent holiday. This, this uh, no. This, this, I, I told everybody in my general vicinity, stay the hell where you are. Like, lest the zombie, lest the lich Jesus, you know, suck the, 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 the living energy out of your body and claim it as his own. No, I was just, it was a, it was a chill weekend. You know, I basically said, listen, you know, everybody's kind of like in upheaval, like things are going crazy, you know, like the, the spring break situation is all over the place for everybody, depending on the school zones and all that nonsense. So I was just like, listen, you know, we'll, we'll make time, but this weekend don't, don't single-handedly devote it to this weekend. You know what I mean? So it was, it was just kind of like it was. It was this weekend was just kind of like relax. Let's werewolf Jesus. That is true. Um. So yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. No, nothing out of the ordinary. Um. Number two, Uncle Forge Bear says only those he allows into the space can come and go. So my question is: Has Uncle Forge Bear ever denied anyone access into his space? Yes, he has. Uncle Forge Bear, their damsel was awesome. You are correct, Marie. Um, Uncle Forge Bear, Uncle Forge Bear has has at times found himself guarded. But you need to remember, not just from access, not just. Okay, I'm gonna put this. 
So, we know that deities existing from a multitude of pantheons sometimes come to find quiet and solace in the wintry woods of Uncle Forge Bear, right? And he allows them to come in knowing that this is a this is a space where nothing will happen no arms will be raised no anger will be expressed right you you can come here you can stay it is quiet it is peaceful it is a place where you can collect yourself so therein lies a position where you have to say to yourself okay because if Uncle Forge Bear is a protector of the balance, like every other member of the library, like those who are who are not trying to make the balance happen, not those who are trying to dictate what the balance looks like, but in fact, understand that there's going to be good and there's going to be bad. There's going to be horrible and there's going to be beautiful. There's going to be there's going to be all of these things and we try our very best when the scales seem to tip one way or the other to bring back that balance, right? We try. So does everybody else there. There have been people, there have been individuals, there have been entities who have tried to enter Uncle Forge Bears who have entered Uncle Forge Bears and have gotten removed. Because there's something that keeps it safe. Now, Uncle Forge Bear, being who he is, it's it's a matter of that space and that space being a sacred one, and not in 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 service of one sanctification or the other, but in general, because we all need that space, right? We all need to be able to defend it, and we all need to be able to look at the situation and go. This is this is a place where we all need to be able to find ourselves. And so Uncle Forge Bear has allowed almost everybody in there, but there have been individuals who have been denied access to the space. Yeah. Will you please give all the beasties a few words of encouragement? Hey, Andy, do you want some words of encouragement at the end of the episode? What? Shocker. Captain Marvel's Mischief says, if Freaky Friday was real, who would you swap bodies with? Who would I switch bodies with? Stephanie, that's what we try to make around here, is a space. We try to make a space. And no, it's not an actual physical space, but hopefully what we do here will encourage you to make your own little space wherever you find yourself. You know what I mean? Even if that's a moment of just sitting in the car, being able to collect yourself, or it's your favorite little coffee place and you sit in the corner and just pop your earbuds in. If it's a if it's a park bench, if it's a elevator, we just try to help you. We try to give you the mental resources in order for you to 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 steal away your own little space. We'll get back to it in a minute, I promise. I promise. Give me a minute, Stephanie. Um if Fear Your Friday was real, who would you saw bodies with? Um I mean, technically, by Freaky Friday rules, wouldn't I end up taking over my dad? Isn't that how that works? I don't know. Like, if I got to choose, um, I don't know if there's anybody I'd rather be but me. If I'm being perfectly honest. Like, oh my goodness. I know. That might be that might be healthy. That might be egotistical. I'm not quite sure. Oh my god! If I freaky Friday with Kevin Feige though for a day, the shit that I would do. Um, here's what the next six projects are for Marvel. You guys ready? It's gonna make every whiny gatekeeping edge lord lose their minds. Be prepared. Like I would have them melting down. I would have them melting down. 
Oh my God. It would be the best. We're doing it. We're doing a trilogy. We're doing a trilogy of She-Hulk movies and Captain Marvel's going to be in seven more films. We're going to make Brie, Brie Larson, the highest paid comic book movie actor, actor ever. And like, oh my God, we're going to do a, all women's Avengers just because we can. We're going to introduce the LGBTQIA Avengers just because we can get prepared. Like we, oh my God, I would. I would damage the psyches of fragile little man children all over the planet. Like either that or give me a yeah, no. John Favreau? Oh my god. No, Dave, Dave, Dave Filoni. Give me a day as Dave. Holy f- yeah. I would destroy poor I would the weeping and gnashing of teeth that you would hear on Reddit and YouTube and Twitter would be resounding. And I would just, mm, the thing, I would just, mm, like every little drop, oh my God, it would be so good. Are you kidding? I would make Mary Poppins. I would I would talk to, was it Emily? Was it Emily Blunt? Was Emily Blunt the, the young Mary Poppins? I would go to her. I'd be like, "Hey, you know what? Six more movies. We're gonna make we're gonna make Mary Poppins into basically a mystical Doctor Who. You ready to go? Let's do this." Emily Blunt, thank you. We would. Oh my god. Oh my god. I would destroy. I would. I would burn down. You know what? Oh, you guys didn't like very much. Guess what? We're giving her a trilogy. Like that'd be it. That'd be it. That would be it. That would be it. Would be it. I would just, I would bask in the glow of melting down man children. I would just, and then we'd switch back bodies and I'd be like, well, my work here is done. Number two, if you were to choose what age would you want to stay at? Uh, 69, dude. No, uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. You know what? I think I was most 28. Yeah, I think 28 was a good year. 28 was physically a good year because 28 was bouncing doors. 28 was boxing on the weekends every weekend. 28 was, yeah, that would be a good one. I feel like that'd be a good place to plop me, you know? Like, I think, yeah, I think 28 would be a good way to go. It's a random poll, I know. But, yeah, it was kind of like, that was, that was, that was my, that was a sweet spot. Hopefully, I would still mentally mature the way that I have. But, yeah, 28 physically would be good for me. Pick two truths and an April Fool's. You can answer this later on. No, 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 no. Two truths and an April Fool's. Two truths and an April Fool's. Two truths and an April Fool's. I have streaked for more than 225 yards. I have, in fact, in the last decade, worn a tutu for longer than 20 minutes. I, I have made out with a mall Santa. There we go. <clears throat> Two truths and an April Fool's. Moving on. I mean, like, make out. By make out, does it mean, like, a kiss longer than 60 seconds? Then, yes, then technically make out. Yeah. All right, moving on. Like, there, but to make out mean that there was tongue involved? Because if, yeah, anyway, we'll just go with make out. All right, so streak for 225 yards, 2-2 two, two for longer than 20 minutes, made out with a mall Santa. So anyway. 
<laughs> I am not. Wow, Heather. I am not. Do I really look that old? Apparently, Heather thinks I'm a mall Santa already. Jesus. That hurt my heart a little bit. Damn. All right, fine. <sighs> um. <laughs> Stephanie said that a space was needed, a space was had, a space was found. That is my goal. That is my homework. That is my assignment to each and every one of you. That is the jam. If you do not have it, find it. If you have it, visit it. I need you to take five minutes today. All right? In that place, in that space, with whatever stimuli, doesn't have to be my audios, can be somebody else's, can be a mu songs you like, can be whatever. Give yourself five minutes today. An assignment, all right? No take backsies, no flip aroundsies. This is how this goes, all right? I expect you to take five minutes for yourself today. And truly and utterly recognize how powerful, how purposeful, how precious you are to me, to all of these beautiful beasties, to everybody. Okay? I need you to take five minutes for yourself because you deserve it. Because at some point, you have to stop and you have to realize that paradise, that oasis, that stillness, it can be found with inside yourself. At that place, at that time, in that space, with that music, with that speech, with those books, with that comic, with that art, whatever it takes. Just five minutes for me, okay? At some point today, find it, own it, be in it, be of it, embrace it, and recognize all of the parts of yourself that go unattended when you don't take that opportunity. Be your very best self, not for anybody else, but for, but for you. All right? Because that is a glorious thing to witness. That is the supreme arc of humanity. And to behold such wonders, to know that that is out there, is the greatest thing that it will ever be. Okay? Okay. I'd like to thank you for your time. It's been a little bit today. I know it started out a little bit discombobulated, but, you know, we we did the best we could. An hour and 17 ain't bad, right? An hour and 18 as of now. So, yes. So, go off. Be fantastic. Get off. Feel fantastic. Be as far out as you need to be. Be as goofy and as and glorious as you are, be everything that you can be throughout the course of today, okay? I believe in you. I do. Headbutt, forehead kiss, bear hug. It's going to be another great week because you're in it with me, okay? Until next time, all I can say is... The April Fools was number two. See you guys later.